The sheer quantity of games released on the Nintendo eShop each week, coupled with a very obtuse layout for the digital store, means that many smaller games probably get buried before most people have even noticed them. The Aquatic Adventures of the Last Human is most likely one such example. A long and fairly obscure name could well seal the game's fate further, so we decided to give it the spotlight treatment and see if this submarine themed game is worth a purchase. I'm Glenn for Switch Up, thank you to the developers for the review copy, so now, let's dive in. The story tells a tale of an earth destroyed by devastating climate change. What is left is now underwater, and you return from a voyage into space looking for other habitable planets to find the ruins of what was once home. When you first start your journey, you are quickly made fully aware of just how small and vulnerable you are in this great watery abyss. Your submarine has no weapons initially, and all you can do is explore your surroundings and hope that any danger lurking nearby have bigger fish to fry at this time. Parts of the story are told through these information stations, and will begin to fill in the details of exactly how the Earth ended up in its current state. Early on you will find your first weapon, a harpoon gun. It is vastly underpowered, but you will have very little time to dwell on this, as you will be soon putting it to use on an early boss. This is an action adventure game that gives the impression of being a bit of a metroidvania at first. You will be exploring your surroundings, initially finding areas that are blocked by certain objects or environmental hazards, with later power-ups granting you access to these areas, and whilst there is an amount of backtracking, the game can also be fairly linear at times too. As well as new weapons, you can also find upgrade crates, and these may well improve your hull, effectively extending your life bar, or increase the potency of your weapon, to name but a couple. These upgrade crates are strewn across the map, with some in plain sight but potentially inaccessible to you until you find the correct weapon, whereas others are tucked away in the far corners of the game world, waiting to be discovered. It's always satisfying when you find one of these upgrades, and it certainly acts as an incentive to explore every inch of the ocean. You will also come across save stations on your journey, and activating these will allow you to fast travel to any other save stations that you have discovered thus far, making it a little easier to backtrack to earlier parts of the game. You won't really come across many enemies as you travel, with the emphasis being more on avoiding environmental hazards whilst exploring, and to compensate for this, the game throws frequent boss battles at you instead. These can be pretty difficult, especially early on when your weapons are not particularly strong and your sub is quite weak. Each boss I faced took a good few tries to defeat, and the game really does start to err on the wrong side of frustration at times because of this. Some of the battles go on for so long, and it's just a little at odds with the rest of the game. This boss that you are seeing right now must have taken me about an hour, and numerous tries to finally beat, and thanks to this traumatic experience I now officially hate seahorses. This boss here took me about half an hour to beat, and I don't mean I kept dying, I mean it was a 30 minute endurance test of waiting for an opening to present itself before taking a few little pot shots and then waiting again and again and so on. Needless to say, it became quite tedious after a while. A few frustrating and or tedious boss battles aside though, the game does have a nice little feel to it. Exploration is fairly straightforward with a map, albeit a very basic one, available to you to assist in navigation and it's quite intriguing reading the clues of what may have happened to leave the world in its current state. The basic nature of the map can cause a problem once you have earned upgrades, which mean you can pass an area that was blocked off to you earlier, only to find that you cannot remember where this was, with the map giving you no real indication at this point either. This leads to you fast travelling to available points to see if it was anywhere near there, and this is not at all ideal. The change from the slow paced exploration to the frequent extremely difficult boss battles is a little jarring and does affect the flow of the game somewhat, plus backtracking is a little laborious too, and gameplay receives 12 out of 20. Controls are tight and responsive, 
Whilst your sub doesn't have a feeling of weight behind it exactly, it's not the fastest vessel out there and this can lead to some frustrating deaths at the hand of a few pretty sprightly sea creatures. Early in the game, the limitations of your weapon will mean that you will need to become accustomed to constantly moving in order to stay alive. Aiming your weapon is handled with the right stick and the ZR button fires it and once you have acquired a few more weapons, you can cycle through them with the L and the R buttons. Your map is visible on the main screen with a larger version available in the pause menu, but it may have been useful for your map to enlarge with a click of the right stick, just to save you from having to pause the game constantly when you wanted to have a look at it. Controls receive 13 out of 20. The game uses a graphical style reminiscent of 8-bit, particularly with the main sprite, but it has a colour palette and a level of detail that 8-bit systems could have only dreamt of. I do love the dystopian setting and it's fascinating to see the remnants of our fallen civilization submerged in their watery grave. It also goes to show that no matter where you go in the world, you'll always find a McDonald's. In all seriousness though, it's a very strange juxtaposition to see the beautiful and serene views of the aquatic setting around you, only to then be reminded that it has come at the expense of the world we once knew. The sudden change in lighting as you enter a new area, or the sight of a giant manta ray gliding past in the distance, really does give this game an eerily beautiful aesthetic, and I really do commend the developers for using a setting that is not as common, being that of Deep Underwater, and mixing it with a theme that is relatively common, the dystopian future, and creating something very unique. Factoring a good use of sprite work, and the visuals really are a treat, and they receive 17 out of 20. The audio is another highlight of the game. It ranges from serene and peaceful to panic inducing and manages to visit a few emotive places in between too. It's never intrusive, but instead adds to the immersion and really is quite an integral part of the game in terms of the type of experience it helps to create. There is a lot of it too, with a few of the areas having their own tunes which again just helps to build a living, breathing world. Audio receives 16 out of 20. The aquatic adventure of The Last Human costs £11.69, $12.99 or €12.99. The production values are higher for the price you are paying and the game is of a decent length. It has some stern competition in this price bracket with games such as Hollow Knight, Blaster Master Zero and Pankapu in and around the same price, but it does do enough differently from these games to be considered as an additional pickup rather than a competitor. The difficulty is a little unbalanced and this may put some people off from ever seeing the latter parts of the game, but it is a solid adventure, albeit perhaps a more enticing deal at around the £8 or the $10 mark, but value receives 14 out of 20. To conclude, The Aquatic Adventure of The Last Human is a game that has clearly had a lot of time, effort and love put into it. From the beautiful aesthetic, the stirring music and the interesting story, this is a game that delivers more than static images and a fairly long and bizarre name may have you believe. It can feel more like a boss rush mode with a few screens to navigate in between at times and this spoilt the experience a little for me. Beating a frustrating boss and feeling that sense of achievement only to run into another one about 5 minutes later felt a little demoralising at times and definitely stunted the rhythm of the game as well as maybe demeaning the purpose of the exploring a little as well. Nonetheless, this is an interesting curiosity to try, maybe the next time it goes on sale. The Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human gets a switch up score of 72%.
Thank you as always everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please remember to like if you did enjoy what you just saw. Consider subscribing for all things Switch all the time if you haven't done so already. And possibly hit that notification button to stay up to date with our latest content. I just want to say a quick thank you to our Patreons for supporting this channel. And each and every one of you for watching our content. Because every time you watch one of our videos it supports us that way too. Take it easy everyone. And as always, happy gaming.